Hi, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and today's quick tip tutorial is going to show you how to use images as guides in Spryder. And in this particular example, I'm going to be using a pre rendered 8 frame walking animation, and we're going to reuse it as a guide uh, to create a fully tweened Spryder version of the animation. So you can see here in the actual Spryder project folder I have set up, I have my 8-frame walking animation ready to use as a guide. So when I started my new project, I pointed to that particular folder, and here are my images ready to be used. So obviously if I wanted to use just one image as a guide, I can just click and drag it onto the canvas, and then go from there. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to load in the full animation. So I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to use the Shift key to select all of the images. And I'm going to use a special feature in Spryder that can import entire sequential images all at once. And if I right click, now that I have them all selected, I can choose Import Selected Images as New Object. So I pick that. And I'm going to leave these alone because they basically are set up to fill and evenly space the entire duration of the animation uh, with each of the frames. So I'm going to leave that as is, and then I just have to left click and drag this image, and that way I can very carefully position the full animation ex exactly where I need it. And now you can see I actually have the animation all set up with this one spray image showing the entire animation sequence. Now that I have my guide images all set up, uh, I want to protect them so that I don't accidentally click and select this image or drag it around while I'm creating my actual character on top of it. So for that, all I have to do is left click on it to select it, and then right click anywhere in the empty part of the canvas and choose lock selected objects. And now you'll see no matter what I do in here, I can't accidentally select that guide image. So there we go. So now all I have to do is go uh, to my first frame in the animation and I would want to set up the entire character and you can watch other videos for that but uh, I'm sure you know the basics of it. You just left click and drag on any particular image, rotate it as needed, and put it in place here like so and I can use the arrow keys to nudge it perfectly into position something like that. And then once I finish placing all of the body part images, I would set up the, the bones. Um, and then, uh, uh, so I'm going to stop the stop recording for a bit to get that all set up. Here's a quick update. I got the um, images all in place for the first frame, the separate body part images, as you can see, using the guide. And at any point, I could unlock the guide image and then play with its Z order to either bring it in front of anything or behind specific things so that I continue can continue to very easily see what I need to see to perfectly place my body part images. And I can even bring it all the way to the front, select it, make it semi-transparent by sliding down the alpha here as you can see, and then I can lock it again uh, by left clicking on it and then right clicking in the canvas and choosing lock selected. Uh, and now I can still move and edit the images that are under it to really perfectly uh, align everything. And here's another quick update. I'm almost done. I created all my bones and I started assigning them. There's just one really troublesome bone, or I should say one troublesome image because it's hiding behind everything else uh, for me to assign this bone to. Uh, usually I just use the very convenient select the bone and hold B and then you can see what images is assigned and toggle it just by left clicking like so. So now you can see that's properly assigned. But in this case it's uh, pretty tricky. So you can see here by default you're in the Z order image, uh, Z order palette which only shows you your images but you can go to the hierarchy window and then you can actually see uh, your bones and what are assigned to the bones. And in cases like that, one simple solution is to just go into this hierarchy and now I can just select this arm and move it up into the appropriate bone, which looks like it's this one here. 
So let's see if that worked. So there's the forward arm and there's the back arm. You can see that that's all properly assigned now and I can just left click and drag that back in place. And once you're done rigging your entire character, it's really important to move your bones around quickly and make sure not only is every image assigned properly to the proper bone, but also that the Z order of all of the images is correct so that when you move, for example, this arm, it doesn't go behind the head instead of in front. Make sure all of the back limbs are behind the body and the pelvis and things like that. You can see here this fist is not in the right Z order uh, because it, it sort of cuts through the leg there. It should not. It should be behind the back leg, not in front. So these are the sort of things that uh, that you should check before you start animating in all of the other frames. Okay, I'm back, and I just finished fixing the last few Z order issues in the Z order palette. Of course, I can also just uh, left click to select any image and hold control and use either the up or down arrows to move it up or down in Z order by one position or the left arrow to bring it all the way down or the right arrow to bring it all the way up in Z order. But now that my Z orders are all correct, I'm ready to start uh, animating on all the frames. So you might notice though, when I go to each of the successive frames, all of the character images and bones that I've set up are not yet on the rest of the frames. So the simple solution for that is to click the parent most bone, which in this case is the pelvis, pelvic bone, and press Z, the Z key or Z key. And what that's going to do is Spryder is going to select everything that is a child of that bone all the way through. So you can see it's selected everything except the guide image because that is not a child of that bone. Now that everything's selected, I'm going to press Control C to copy and then control shift V to paste and that's going to paste everything here into all of the other successive frames. So now you'll see when I go from frame to frame all of those images are there. So finally to finish this animation based on the guides all I need to do is have fun going to each frame and I'm using the one key and the two key to go forward and back to each of the keyframes and now I can just have fun repositioning my character and all of his body parts using the bones based on the... I can see that the whole character moved down a couple pixels so I can just select the pelvis and then move it down a pixel or two and just rotate everything to get it into proper position like so and do that with all the limbs and of course as needed I can always unlock the guide image and then bring it all the way to the front or all the way to the back and change its uh, alpha, whatever I need to do to help me to uh, perfectly place that particular frame. And I'm back and now you can see that I've carefully made each frame line up fairly closely with the guide image and obviously it could take more time as much time as I would need to make it as perfect as I need it to be. So now you can see I have the animation recreated using only the body part images instead of the full frames. But the really nice thing is this of course is tweened. So instead of an 8 frame walking animation, the frame rate and the animation playback can be as smooth as whatever device is uh, replaying the animation. Uh, so the last thing that we would need to do is to delete our guide image. So the way to do that is to just first right click somewhere in the blank part of the canvas and choose unlock all objects. Then just go to any particular frame, it doesn't matter which in the animation. Select the guide image and then hold the shift key and press delete. And that's going to delete it from the entire animation. And now we have a fully tweened uh, walk animation ready to go. I hope this tutorial has been useful. Thanks a lot for watching.